everybody and welcome back to Musings by Nikki. We have we have reached the point in the project where it comes time to build our cover. So I spent some time during lunch and after lunch today because I filmed my, you know, editing my signatures video this morning. So that'll go up and this will come up the next day. I'm filming this in advance because I needed to, well, I just, I was like, let me do this to make sure that I don't mess it up. And I want to be as clear and concise and teach as best as I can. Um, because I realized that there are people of all different levels here. So here's what I want to, here's what I did. So I took some time to think through how do I want to do this? And I think this is what we'll do. We'll break this step into a couple of videos because I want to make sure that I have time also for you guys to ask questions and answer questions and stuff. Um, we'll build the hardcover book or the hardcover in one and the soft cover in one. Um, the hardcover one might take a couple videos or I'll just have to cut out like drying time and stuff. Um, so I've assembled on my desk here some examples so we can just talk through the materials that I use and kind of some options. So we'll talk through this stuff and we'll see how far we get today. And then we'll move on and we'll do the hardcover um, journal cover first. So what I wanted to say is in my last video, I was talking about fabric covering our journal. So I've got some fabrics here and I will talk through uh, fabric selection in a minute. Um, I also have a couple of different things here. I have, this is Tyvek. Um, I buy my Tyvek like this on Amazon. I just buy it in sheets. You can use, and I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have an example of this, but um, the priority here in the US, and I'm gonna assume that in other countries because this is just such a great material for it. Um, the mailers, like our priority mail mailers, they are made out of Tyvek. Tyvek is also the stuff, like if you know anybody in your life that does construction, <laughs> Tyvek is also the stuff that they wrap a house with here in the US at least um, before they put siding on and stuff. So it's a weather barrier. So if you don't know what Tyvek is, um, it is, that's what it sounds like. It, it looks like paper, but you can't rip it. It is, you can't rip this. It's a uh, fiberglass, I believe, and different fibers and stuff um, made into this thin, fairly indestructible uh, sheet, sheeting. And it's like obviously weatherproof for houses. It makes mailers great because they're fairly indestructible. I mean, you can send stuff in a Tyvek mailer and it's, as long as you've sealed it up well, it's gonna have a hard time getting destroyed. And they try sometimes to destroy things, you know, inadvertently, but it's hard to destroy one of these. Um, so this is what Tyvek is. You can buy it, like I said, I just buy it in these packs on Amazon. If you go on Amazon and search it up, um, Tyvek sheets. Uh, let's see if this says anything. Well, this says they're 8.3 um, by 11.7. So like almost eight and a half by 11, they're just slightly bigger. Well, that's that's an A4 size. So this says it's A4 size and it's DuPont Tyvek. Let me see, can you see that? There you go, oh, wrong way. There you go, that's how you spell it. That's what it is. Okay, so Tyvek, this is what I use to reinforce my covers because it's so dang strong. Um, it I reinforce the parts that are moving, that flex, you know, in the spine. Then I've got just a pack of um, book board. Whoops, I just totally smacked my camera. Sorry guys. Uh, this I also get on Amazon. This is just book board sheets. This is eight and a half by 11. It's called 50 point and it's a book board sheet. There's 20 in this pack and they are just sheets of um, like hard, hard card stock, really hard cardboard. And this one's fairly flexible. You can get them in lots of different weights. I usually get like a medium weight. Um, this is 
this one is a little bit more flexible. This is like the medium weight book board that I get. So it's still got some flex when I do this, but not a ton. And by the time I put fabric over the top of this and paper on the back of it, it, um, it, you know, holds together really well. You can always, if you get the medium weight stuff and you don't like it, you think it's too flexible, you can always double it up. Okay. Next, I brought something over because I thought if you are new to junk journaling and you don't want to attempt the step of building a cover, although I really encourage you to try it because, you know, it's, it's a good skill to have because then you can then you can make books whatever shape you want because you can build the cover whatever size you want. If you want to make a, you know, 12 inch long by only three inch tall, big, long, weird, flappy book thing, you can because you'll learn how to build the cover. I'm going to silence my phone right now because that's going to make me crazy. <laughs> okay. But, however, if you're too intimidated at this point to take this next step and you just really want to get a cover, then you find a book that um, has a cover relatively the size that you want, or you make your journal guts to fit a book that you have, and you can just get them at the dollar store, you can find them at garage sales, I mean, get books, you know, don't take the books you like to read, <laughs> and then you just run your knife down the edge of the book insert. Let me see, let me see. This is an old book, but I, I can show you nonetheless. So you open it up, right? And there's usually this cover page. You just take your knife and run it down the side here very carefully and do the same on the back, run it down the side. And then depending on if it's glued in or not, that sometimes will do enough to just pull the book block out. Sometimes you have to kind of slowly fillet the book away or it's glued right in. If they're the like cheaper books from the dollar store or something, sometimes they're glued right in and you have to kind of pull them out. But if you are careful about it, and I have no super great formula and I often am too heavy handed at this point, but if you're careful about it, you end up with a book cover that has a spine still intact. And you can just cover this with fabric like we'll do in a you know later step here. So this is a way to go. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I use these a lot. I have a lot of books when we were moving, um, yeah, I had, I have a lot of books <laughs> and when we were moving, we were like getting ready to pack up a bunch of the books. And I thought, you know, some of these are just old books that I really don't read that I, or I've read already or a couple times and, um, and they're books that like not a lot of other people would want here. Like, I'll tell you what, this is called The Longing by Beverly Lewis. It's a series of Amish novels. I, you know what? I got really into them for a while though. They're very, they, they make you want to live a simple life. I'm telling you what, they're stories that are completely devoid of worldliness, which I kind of liked. <laughs> anyway, um, I pulled the insides out. I pulled the guts out. I've used them for other projects, one or two of which we'll probably do at some point here. Um, and I just have a stack of covers too. I found a bunch of books at a garage sale for super cheap, like dimes and nickels. So I didn't feel bad pulling those apart either. So this is always a way to go, um, like I'm saying. So if you don't wanna build your cover, that's a way to go. Then the last, well, oh, and this right here, this one is called X Fasten. This is book repair tape. It is fantastic. It's like fabric tape. Um, it's really sticky and it's flexible and it's you this is another pr product that you like you can't rip it so it's book repair tape it's a little bit expensive but it is fantastic and it works so well for putting together books you can use this in place of tyvek in fact i often do and so i'm considering right now um building two covers and I'll show you how to do one with book repair tape and one with Tyvek um, because they're both good options that will make your book kind of last the long haul. Uh, and then for the soft cover journal, I don't know why I have that because I was thinking about using that as the liner. Um, for the soft cover journal for the single side or the single signature journal that we're gonna do, um, I 
we'll use, we're, I think we're gonna use that cover that, you know, that comes with the kit. We're gonna try and use that. Um, and then we'll maybe put, but I'm thinking we'll put fabric behind it. And then, so we'll put that and then fabric, and then we'll sandwich this in between. And this is the back of a 12 by 12 paper pad. So I always save the covers and the backs of my 12 by 12 paper pads because they work fabulous for making soft cover journals. And by the way, I grabbed this particular one because this is the, I've got a couple questions about which paper pad am I using? I love this one. It's by the Paper Studio, which you can get at Hobby Lobby here in the US. Um, and it's called Nature Botanical 2. It's just got some, I mean, this is a gorgeous pad. I love the, look at, aren't those so pretty? Anyway, you've seen several of them in the book now. <laughs> so when I'm getting to the end of this, um, then I will save the front and the back. And I've got kind of a little stack of those as well. I'll throw that down there. And so I've got a stack of them like this and I will cut this down and use it. It's nice because it's got just a little bit of heft, but it's still super flexible and it's good to bulk up that cover. You can um, put fabric down and quilt over it, sew right through it, you know, it's nice because it's not too thick, but um, works great for making flexible covers. But I'm gonna put that down there because we're gonna deal with that later. Then the last thing I have to show you is, um, this is my extremely beat up uh, binding brush. <laughs> and it's green because I think I was doing something dry brushing with it or something, I don't know. But it's, um, it's my gluey brush. So I've got this. And then this is the, this is the glue that I use. Um, PVA glue to make my covers with. I got this on Amazon a long time ago and I tell you what it is um, it has lasted a long time because you don't use a ton of it <laughs> and it's a neutral pH it has um, and it stays flexible it remains a little bit flexible and it dries clear so this is really good for making book covers because um, you still want the cover to be a little bit flexible. You don't want anything that dries too brittle um, because, you know, think of the abuse a book cover takes over the years. You know, hopefully if you're making a book for someone, they're going to want to open it and use it and look at it a lot. And so you're going to want materials that are going to withstand that, you know. Paper pages, they'll rip. Pockets might rip out. People can do those repairs. But your book cover really needs to, to stand the test of time. So that's why... Um, this one is just by Lineco, <clears throat> and I got this, like I said, I got this on Amazon as well. And then I just have, I got a bunch of styrofoam plates from somebody asked if I wanted a bunch of them, like that I would use them for crafting or something. And I was like, sure. So I use them to put this in because then I can throw it away. <laughs> okay, so let's that's the list of supplies I know I just whizzed through that please 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 if you have any questions put them in the description box below I'm really hoping to make this as accessible as possible for people who are a little intimidated by making a hardcover you know building it on your own so please please if you have um questions put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them or I might have to like do it on the next video or something because um Sometimes it's hard to show, you know what I mean? Or to hard, sometimes it's hard to type it in without just showing you. And sometimes showing you is the best way to teach. So <clears throat> anyway, here we go. These are our signatures, the pared down ones. So we've edited them a little so they're not so crocodile mouth. And we've got our three signatures, okay? We need to now figure out the dimensions for our book. And if I was a smart person, oh, here, here's one. I was going to say, I would have a pencil out here so we can keep track of this. And then let me find a piece of paper. I just had one. Here we go. Oops. Oh, that's got tags printed on it. Here we go. Okay. 
So we need to figure out what our spine is going to be. And then we need to figure out what our covers are going to be. Okay. Rarely do I ever write this down, but because I'm teaching, I want to make sure that I'm keeping track and not acting like a dork because I can oftentimes act like a total dork while I'm doing this myself and no one's watching and I just do whatever I want to. Okay, <laughs> so what we want to do, I think I showed this in another video, um, but I will show it again now here real time what I want to do. To find out how wide my spine is, I was showing you before that I was kind of doing this and I'm just using the, the measurements on my board here and I'm looking down here and going, okay, this part, this part of my spine fits, I mean, when I push them together a little, they fit within an inch. But when I turn it around, it's a whole different story. You know, if I let go, it's like three inches. If I push it together, it's like comfortably two and a half. So you want your book to have a little bit of give. You don't want to have to smash it real tight like this in order to fit it inside of a spine because then you're going to open it up and it's going to, you know, pop open. You want to just give it a little smush because I'm going to tie mine shut. Um, and I happen to like chunky journals. That's just kind of my look. If you don't like chunky journals or you don't want it to be at all alligator mouthed, then you really do need to take the measurement almost certainly of this side. You're just gonna end up with a, a real wide spine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just at some point the spine gets too wide and then it looks weird and it's cumbersome to try and flip through. So, um, so two and a half inches. So the other way you can do it is I kind of hold this down and I take my measure, My this is a ruler, not a measure, <laughs> and I look over here and I go, yep, the three spines fit inside of an inch on this side, but when I go to this side and smash it down, again, I'm seeing probably two and a half inches would be, you know, like I'm, I'm just holding it down a little, two and a half inches. So I'm going to say for this book, we'll do a two and a half inch spine. And then we want to know what size to make the covers themselves, right? So you need three pieces for building the cover. Sorry if you've done this a thousand times. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I give the information out as best as possible. So what you want to take into account is most books have a little overage you know, a margin around the edges, and that's to protect your pages and your text block and everything, right? So most books have just a little bit, well, this is a bad example, but because um, it's totally warped from being probably dropped in the water at some point, but that's what's giving it its beautiful patina. Anyway, see how it's got a little extra up there, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. So we want to account for that. And on this one, I've got paper tabs that I don't want to get smushed. So if my if my cover stopped here, right, then all these tabs would be, first of all, it'd be hard to put a tie on them, right, to put a tie on here. And secondly, all these tabs would be open to, you know, abuse from moving it around and handling. So we want our cover to come just past those tabs. See, now you can't see them, but I can feel that the tab is lining right up with the edge of this. Now they're protected. So that's what we wanna do. If you've got paper tabs or lots of extra embellishments and stuff, I suggest putting your cover out, you know, roughly the end. If they're fabric tabs and stuff, then it's not so important. And sometimes the look of, you know, stuff hanging out is nice. But in this case, they're paper tabs and I want them protected. So what I'm going to do is I'm using my measurements on my, you know, glass mat here. And I know that the book stops at roughly five, but it has a little extra because of stuff hanging out. And the tabs come out to like five and a half. So I'm going to say our covers should be five and a half wide. And then tall, 
So the book block itself, that's this, is going to be, you know, our signatures book block itself is going to be seven. And we've got some little flappies hanging out the top, but those are just fabric tabs and stuff. So in order to make it, um, you have just a little bit of leeway, right? I would say we go seven and a half. Okay, so we're going to add for a quarter inch of space on on either side. So we'll go seven and a half. Okay, and this is roughly um, how my books end up for the most part is like if I have an eight and a half. Now these are different because they're five by seven signatures folded. If I have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded in half, then you end up with, um, then you end up with a eight and a half, or then you end up with, excuse me, let me say this right. In eight, <laughs> you have your paper, you end up, and then you fold it in half, right? So you end up with eight and a half this way. And then this way, when you fold it in half, you end up with five and a half, right? Because half of 11 is five and a half. So eight and a half by five and a half. Most of the time I add an extra 0.5 inches to get a six by nine cover. That's most of the time what I'm doing when I make a standard size book. So this time it makes sense that we're figuring about an extra half an inch tall by about an extra half an inch wide, okay? Rounded spines, curved spines are a different beast. And maybe down the line, I'll do a tutorial on those. Um, you have to figure things slightly different for them, but uh, this time we're just gonna do a flat spine. So our next step is then to cut those things out. So we're gonna need a couple of pieces of book board. And let's see, we should be able to get five and a half, five and a half. So we should be able to get both covers out of this. And I'm going to go look. I've got a ton of off cuts of um, book board over there. So rather than cut into a new sheet just to make the spine, I'm going to go look and see if I can find an off cut that's two and a half inches and at least um, at least seven and a half inches tall. So I'll be right back. Okay, I found one just as I suspected I would. Um, I'm just gonna trim that little extra fray off there. So in my, um, it's a nice hard one like this is. So in my extra scraps over there, I found one that's two and a half. It's long though, so we'll have to cut it down, which is fine. Um, so this will be our spine piece. So now we need to cut this down and I'm gonna rearrange a little here so we can bring in my um, cutter. I have this big guy cutter here, which I love. So this thing cuts through bookboard like butter, which is lovely. If you don't have, but it's expensive, right? I didn't buy myself one of these. I did not treat myself to one of these until I had made several, several journals already and then felt finally like I could justify owning one. Um, if you don't have one, the little, the smaller Fiskars that just has the slidey thing, don't, it, it might cut through. If you're using this thicker book board, it'll cut through the top layer and then you have to turn it over and cut through again on the back side. It can be tricky to line that up just right though. The other thing you can do is um, draw a line with a ruler and take your scissors or take a utility knife. Um, you know, put your ruler right up next to it and slice down with a utility knife. You just have to be more careful like that, but um, it's doable. You don't have to have this cutter. I'm just doing it with this cutter because I have it and it's easy and it will expedite it for us here. Wow, this car out there honking at somebody. Okay, so we know we want our spine because our covers are gonna be seven and a half inches tall. So we want our spine to be seven and a half inches. And I gotta lift this side up a little over here because 
it's falling off the edge of my glass mat. So I'm going to go to seven and a half inches tall. And then I'm going to cut. Okay. Then this is our cover and it's exactly 11 inches um, long. So that means if we cut it exactly in half, it should be exactly what we need, five and a half. So I'm gonna get it to five and a half here. There we go. Yep, exactly two covers, the same size. And then, however, we need them to be only seven and a half inches tall. So I'm going to if there's ever a time that I really spend my time trying to measure, it's usually when I'm building a cover. Because boy, I tell you, I have miscut pieces so many times while I was in a rush. So this is one of those things. It's not just a piece of paper. Like this is, you know, more expensive book board and stuff. So take your time. There we go. So we should have now. Get rid of our scraps over here. We should have two pieces of um, cover and one piece of spine. Look at that. So that's not so hard, right? We got to this point. This is a little bit warpy. It wants to warp, but it's going to want to warp when we put glue on too. So I let things dry under heavy stuff to make sure that they dry well. So at this point, again, I do lots and lots of checking, rechecking when I'm doing this. So I want to make sure I'll take my signature, I'll lay it down on top here, and then I look around. So it gives me a little bit of space up here. It definitely comes to the edge of my tabs here, and it gives me a little bit of space down here. So this is perfect. This is what I want. So now we have come to the point where we need to put these three pieces together, okay? Now, I got rid of one of these things too quickly here. I should, forgot to tell you, you should, whoops, save your little scrap cutoff pieces. I just was trying to get things cleared off my desk. And I'll show you why in a second. You want to put I like to put a little bit of space in between, right? That's to allow for flexing of the book cover. If you put them up right next to each other, this is thick book board and these edges here are going to start wearing on each other. And I'm trying to look for flex points that are going to, you know, over time be a problem. So a little bit of space buys you that room in there for them to not grind on each other or anything. And it'll totally be taken care of and held together well with the Tyvek or the, the tape, okay? Um, right at this moment, actually, I'm gonna go cut another set of pieces just like this so that I can expedite the process of making one out of book repair tape and one out of Tyvek, okay? So I'm gonna go cut another set just like this. Um, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So I've got a second set now of cover cut, cover pieces cut. Um, so let's go through the steps to put these together. And I'm going to do the book repair tape one first. This one is by far become my favorite because a couple reasons. It doesn't take any drying time and it's just much faster um, and super easy. So, and it holds together just as well. So I'm going to, now the reason I said to keep um, your off cuts is because it's a really great way to um, figure out how much space to leave uniformly. So I am, this is thicker, so I'm just gonna put one in as a spacer. But here's what you want to do. It's great if you have like a craft mat like this or like this. 
um, they're really helpful. If not, you could always take a ruler. Mine is this cork back one, which is nice because it's, you know, not as slippery. And you want to have something, a straight edge, a straight edge here and here, somewhere to line these up against. So you know that you're keeping your book as square as possible. Because if you get off kilter with this step, you're going to end up with one of those books that closes and it's going to be shifted, you know, like tilted like this. And so it's going to rock when you try to like stand it up. So getting this part squared off is is very essential. So I usually use my ruler on my top side and then I bring it into square along here and along here. Okay. So I like where that one is. And then, whoops, and see it's gonna be hard, especially on the glass mat, it wants to slide. Um, then I'm gonna put one of these in as a spacer. And so I'm still squared there. I'm squared here. This, because it's a little wobbly, is squared there, but we're good. And we'll push that one up against the top there. Okay, now I'm going to cut a piece of this super sticky stuff. That's about, I want it to go over this, and then I'm going to cut down here low enough that it'll wrap back on itself on both sides and I'll show you what that means and meet in the middle of the other page there. So I'm going to cut it here. So I've got a cut end. And I'm going to move my ruler. And I'm going to make sure I'm still squared up. And then I'm going to gently put that down so I try not to move them until I've got a good firm hand on there. All right, this stuff is really, like I said, it's super sticky like carpet tape. So you don't want to be trying to peel this back off because it's just never going to be the same. <clears throat> um, I'll do that in a second. So now we've got that side and I'm just going to take this back around as tight as I can around the top. It's a little bit flexible because it's made out of like a fabric. So you'll feel like if you give it a little bit of a stretch, you, ca you can, you can kind of give it a little bit of a stretch. So if you pull and lay it down. Now I cut this just a tad too much and I don't want it to wrap back around to the front. Because if you use a thinner fabric, you would actually see this through that. So, all right, now I'm going to take my uh, bone folder and I'm going to run down the middle in between because what I'm doing is sticking those two sides of book tape together and you'll get this nice crease. See that? Just like what books have. So that looks really nice underneath fabric or paper. So you're just sticking the two middle parts together and it's also sticking it to the edges of the book and everything. Then I'm gonna just take it and run and make sure that all of this is stuck down really well. Okay, so there we go. We have one hinge. <laughs> we have the front or back of a book. Now we're gonna put the other piece on. So I'm gonna get my top ruler thing back up here. I'm gonna square off here and square off here. And I'm gonna put Just that space and it ends up moving. I just do that to give myself a visual reminder of how much space I want in between. Okay. So I seem to be square and 
with this piece warping a little bit, it, it it's giving me a, it's fooling my vision, but I think we're good. Yeah, okay. More book tape. It's so sticky it wants to stick to my scissors. But that's a good thing. Not sticking to my scissors isn't a good thing, but. Okay, square, square, gently lay it down. And. Go ahead and repeat those steps on this side. Oops, see, they wanted to fold. If it folds over on itself like this, good luck. Might as well cut that edge off, which is fine because I gave myself enough anyway. Oh my gosh, get off my finger. There we go. All right. There we go. We're going to go in there and give it a nice crease. And press it down real good. And then we'll give this side that same crease and burnish it down. So essentially the building so see, because we took the time to square it off, um, this one got a little closer together. See how this one flaps easier and this one doesn't want to flap as easy? These got a little closer together. It, it does not make a difference in the long run. What makes a difference is that this thing isn't wonky like this and wants to go like this, right? It sits flat. Sits flat, that's good. So we have essentially built our first book cover. So let's just for, you know, the sake of fun, <laughs> throw ours in and see what we think. Look at that, guys. So see how when I let go of it, it's not super alligator mouthy. Well, it's kind of hard to show you now, but um, I can I can close it like this and there's less distance here than here. That means we're doing we're doing good. Once you put things in, they tend to get, um, once we bind everything. But I like that my tabs are protected over here. So we're doing good. Okay, we've got first steps there, guys. Now let me show you the other method for doing this with the Tyvek. I'm gonna put that up there. <clears throat> with the Tyvek. Okay, so here's our other example cover pieces. Now we're gonna need to bring in the glue and a piece of Tyvek, which we're going to have to cut down. So this, we want to cut a piece of Tyvek to seven and a half inches, and it can be this long. I like having, you know, some people I've seen just do it like, you know, the width of the spine and then they go over an inch or two here. Again, I'm kind of overkill on the spine thing. And you might choose to believe that this is super overkill and it probably is, but I want my book covers to last. So I figure the most amount of grab and reinforcement I can give it on this side, the better it's gonna support these joints and the middle. Plus it's just, you know, this is good wear and tear stuff. So I don't mind it being this wide. I want it to be just um, just slightly under seven and a half inches tall. Uh, just slightly because then I don't have to tr you know mess with trimming it off and stuff. So I'm gonna get my, you can cut this with a paper cutter. So I'm gonna go here and cut, I'm gonna, right, we're using it this way. So I'm gonna cut off this top edge to make this seven and a half 
and then I'm going to take it just like a few uh, millimeters less. There you go. The stuff is incredible. Look at you literally can't tear it. I mean, I can I can try. It doesn't tear. It is strong. I think they use this stuff to build like bio buy some of the biohazard suits and stuff too. Crazy. Okay, now that I don't need my paper cutter, I'm gonna stick that down here. We won't need that the rest of this video because I think what we'll do is get this glued together. Um, and then next steps will be in the next video. So here's what we're going to do here. We're lining our stuff back up, right? And our piece of Tyvek is going to go across the middle, supporting those joints. Again, we want some space in between the covers and the spine, right? Oh, and then I usually do this just to make it a little easier to not have to match up right at the corners. Okay, now you can put Tyvek on both the inside and the outside of the cover. I only put it on the inside because on the outside, I'm covering it with fabric and that provides its own layer of strength to the outside joints as well. So the Tyvek is strong enough and good enough that I only put it on the inside. Plus, we'll have another piece of Tyvek on the back of our book binding strip. So it'll have double Tyvek on the inside. So a double dip of Tyvek, if you will. These are all the guts that you know, done done beautifully and pristinely on the inside of a journal will last forever and no one will ever see. <laughs> but you'll know that they're done well, right? So I um, typically apply the glue and put the spine on first because it's really difficult to keep everything lined up and laid out and then put the glue on and then, you know, whatever. So I find it's easier to do it one step at a time. This does not have to be exactly centered. It just needs to be roughly in the center. So I'm gonna put some of my PVA out here. And then here's the thing with this too. Um, you want a nice layer that goes all the way to the edges, but you do not want it to be so wet that it starts seriously warping everything because if you get too much on here, then it's going to bleed through the Tyvek. It's going to bleed through the cardboard's going to get super warped. So you want a nice sticky layer, but you do not want do you just don't want to overdo it, right? And all the way to the edges, all the way up to the edges. And then I'm just going to go mid mid middle-ish. And the thing that I'm most worried about is making sure that this stays, you know, a little bit above and a little bit below. I'll flip it over and we'll give this a real good press down. Make sure that glue bonds really well with the Tyvek. Okay. Next, we will apply one cover and then we'll do the other, okay? So I'm going to square my book up, line it up exactly here, square it up, and scoot it over and give it a margin. And then I'm going to go like this, roughly, because I want to apply my glue to this rather than the Tyvek, just because it's it's easier applying it to this. It's floppy and it's harder to maneuver when it's wet and full of glue. It's way easier to have the glue on the book board itself. Um, this is the part where I usually turn into a hot mess crafter because glue gets everywhere. So I'm trying really hard to, you know, look like I'm, you know, know what I'm doing and I'm being nice about it. 
but usually this part, by the end of this part, I'm usually covered in glue. My desk is covered in glue. <laughs> Everything's covered in glue because I just start pasting away and I don't pay attention. My PVA, I've had this bottle for probably two years now. That's, you know, some of that is because I've started using the book repair tape more now. Um, but I can tell that as it's gotten a little older, it still works just great. Actually, maybe works a little bit better because it dries faster. So it's it uh, gets tacky really fast. You kind of do have to move fast. Now I'm going to line it up. I'm going to give myself a little spacer here. And I want to make sure that my bottom edges are squared all the way along. Technically, if your spacer, see how it's already wanting to bubble up here? Um, if you put your spacer in there and it's the same distance all the way along, it should do that for you. It should square it for you, but. Again, just burnishing this down really, really good. Okay, and we're gonna do the same. So there we go, see, we're, we're good. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Line it up, give myself a little space, and give my book a little trace. I'm a poet, don't you know it? All right, flip this back over. So if I get gluey on this side, it's all good. And so now once this is done, once I've got this um, last cover here glued on, what I'm going to do is put it to dry. Although, like I said, this is drying really fast. I want to put it to dry underneath something really heavy. I've got this big old dictionary um, that's really heavy and it's big enough to cover this whole thing. And I'll put it to dry under that because I want this to dry as flat as possible without the ends curving up and stuff. Um, when we put our fabric on, we're going to have to repeat that same drying thing because, you know, we're going to use more glue and that's going to make the fabric want to curl up again. All right. Again, I'm making sure I have an even coat, but it's not, it's not too, uh, okay. It's not too wet, but it's wet enough and it's an even coat. Okay. I'm gonna give myself the same spacer here and then I'm gonna line up my edges and make sure I'm good. Do that, it needs to. Okay. See, this is already getting dry over here. Again, we're just burnishing the heck out of this to make sure it's nice and secure. Okay. So there we go, we've got another one. But see how this one. See how these are wanting to warp out a little? Can you kind of see that on camera? Oh yeah, see how this one's warping? So we want to quick get that underneath something heavy so that it dries as flat as possible. So I'm gonna just go grab my big encyclopedia right over here, guys. Ouch. I don't know what I just stepped on. Boom. There we go. That's gonna dry nice and flat. <laughs> so, uh, let's look at the other side of this. This is actually, oh, nope, I forgot. This one doesn't have a, anything pretty on the cover. Okay, so that's gonna dry, dry it nice and flat. So we've got this one and we've got the other one um, made. Like I said, this one made out of the book tape is, ready to go right now. So we could start fabric covering it right now, but we won't because I don't, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, and the next, you know, I just want to make these steps 
easy enough and let you have time to digest the information. Okay, so we've got this part done. Part two, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead, get off camera and then get my desk reset. I'm gonna just film it right away again. But, so these, these videos are going to post consecutive days, right? So, but I'm going to film a couple of steps right now. So what I'm saying is, you might have questions after we get to one part and I might not be able to address it in the video because obviously you're not gonna see this till later and I won't be able to answer till right now. You can always private message me uh, through my Etsy shop. You can um, go to my Musings by Nikki Facebook page and you can um, message me through Facebook Messenger. I am on Instagram. You can DM me on Instagram. You can send me an email. It's super easy. It's just NikkiAdigan at gmail.com. Literally the name of my channel, Nikki Adigan. Just put an at gmail.com behind it. <laughs> and you can reach me there. I would love to help you guys. I want this to feel accessible. So I want you to, you know, if, if you're afraid of doing this, I want it to be easy. If you're an old pro and you've done this a hundred times, and then awesome. Maybe you see something in the way I'm doing it that works, you know, that you go, oh, I want to try that. Or maybe you're like, Psh, I'm good with my way, which is fine. My way is a conglomeration of uh, trial and error and watching a whole bunch of people's videos. So I'm so grateful for YouTube for all the like free content out there of all these different people's videos that just have put this info out over the years. So here we go, guys. That's enough chitty chatty for right now. I've still got some glue on my plate over here. So I'm going to cover this with uh, fabric, but that will be the next video so that I don't waste that glue. Anyway, so there you go. Spoiler. We use that same glue to put the fabric on. <laughs> anyway, guys, maybe I'll make myself a cup of coffee and take a break, a brief break before I film the next one. So I'm not super punchy. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, whatever time it is on whatever side of this fantastic globe of ours that you live. And I hope that uh, you're staying safe and healthy and um, that you're being crafty or artistic or at least doing some form of self-care and taking care of yourself and so you can take care of your families and other people. <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys again very soon. And until then, take care and God bless. Bye, guys.